Hi, in this episode I'm going to discuss amino acid metabolism. So, first of all, what are amino acids and the amino acid pool? Amino acid is basically carbon with a carboxylic acid on one side and an amine group on the other side with an R group, which could be anything, and there could also be an R group there if you really want them to be, but generally in the amino acids is it hydrogen. And in mammals, the nitrogen has to be obtained from the diet as there is no way to actually store the nitrogen permanently. And the amino acid pool refers to all the amino acids in the body available for use in circulation. And they're generally needed for growth and derivatives of amino acids such as proteins. So, what goes into this pool? You get the dietary protein, just protein you eat. The synthesis of non-essential amino acids, I'll discuss what essential and non-essential means in a minute. Tissue and protein catabolism, which is the breakdown of proteins and the, well, tissue protein catabolism and synthesis. Obviously, synthesis takes it out, catabolism puts it in. So that's about 4 grams a day. So what uses it up? As I said, protein synthesis uses a lot of the amino acid pool, but also Catabolism, breaking down for energy, the ammonia to urea, and, synth and synthesis of glucose and lipids. Synthesis of nitrogen containing compounds including heme, neurotransmitters, creatine, purines, and pyrimidines. So, in the body, generally glucose and fatty acids are the main sources of energy. However, amino acid oxidation provides energy as well. Normally, about 10-25% of humans normal energy requirements. This actually increases with excessive dietary protein, so if you eat a lot of protein it will increase, or during periods of starvation where you can't get your sugars and your fatty acids. And it's been shown that in some carnivores it's up to 50% of amino energies from amino acids. So, as I said, you have your essential and your non-essential, and then you've got two categories which are glucogenic and ketogenic, which I'll discuss as well. Essential basically can't be made by the body, you have to get them in the diet and non-essential can be synthesized so they can be made from other things in your body. And glucogenic catabolism yields pyruvate or immediate the TCA cycle and um, ketogenic will yield acetoacetate, acetyl-CoA or acetyl-CoA. Here we can see the essential and the non-essentials this way glucogenic, glucogenic and ketogenic, and ketogenic. As you can see, there's only two ketogenic, so it's quite rare of purely ketogenic compounds. A lot of glucogenic ones, and a fair few glucogenic and ketogenic. As you can see here, where all of them come into the cycle. So you've got, basically, you're going to produce pyruvate, acetyl-CoA, acetoacetyl-CoA, ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, fumarate or oxaloacetate. In general, actually I'll start discussing this in the next episode. Let's keep this one nice and short and go straight into the glucogenic amino acids.